everyone. We are the Facebook group. This is Robin Abri, Ashma Giovanni, Dustin Tunick, and I'm Elizabeth Hagen. The title of our research was Social Anxiousness and Facebook Use, an Exploration of Social Networking Sites and Socially Anxious Individuals. Our aim was to find out whether socially anxious individuals use Facebook more than those who aren't. We grounded our research in the use and gratifications theory and used two different scales for measurement. Sheldon's unwillingness to communicate scale and Leary's social anxiousness interaction scale. Now I'm going to hand it over to Dustin, who's going to talk more about the theory and the literature. Like Elizabeth said, we based our research upon the uses and gratifications theory, which, according to Ruggiero, asked the basic question, why do people get involved in one particular type of mediated communication or another, and what gratifications do they receive from it? Basically, it explains that people seek out media to fulfill certain needs. In terms of media, we looked at Facebook specifically because it's such a popular phenomenon that almost every college student is using these days. <coughs> Social networking sites in general are websites that allow people to interact, communicate, stay in touch, and get to know others. Other studies have found reasons for why people log on to the internet, but very few explore the motivations for Facebook use. Our research questions were twofold, and our first research question is, what motivates people to use Facebook? Turning to our independent variable, social anxiousness is defined as when people experience fear and apprehension in social situations. This can help explain the rise of the internet as a way to avoid social situations. So we decided to see if this finding applied to Facebook as well. Given that there is little relationship about there is little research, excuse me, about the relationship between social anxiousness and Facebook use, our second research question asks, how does social anxiousness affect Facebook use? I'm going to hand it back to Elizabeth to discuss our method with you. Okay, we sent out um, our survey online to 2037 UGA students. Um, Dr. Sweetser randomly selected these students from the public email directory here at UGA. Uh, we were interested in college students specifically, not only because Facebook was created as a college or as a tool for college students, but also because they still remain to be the largest proportion of, or the largest uh, amount of users on the site. Um, we developed our sur or we deployed our survey via SurveyMonkey over a 10-day period in October. Um, and we received 263 responses, which was a 12.9% response rate. We were actually really happy with this because we fell right within uh, Florida, Georgia week and fall break. Um, we invited the students via email in three waves, and we made sure to have the email come from my UGA email address, and then the subject line made it really clear that I was a fellow student asking for their help with research. Both of these things were done to not only increase the response rate, um, but to also, well, to increase the response rate right by um, not having them deleted as spam. Uh, respondents were first asked if they have a Facebook account, followed by general questions about Facebook use, like how many friends do they have, how many times a day do they log in. Uh, next, using a five-point Likert scale, we asked 26 items from Sheldon's unwillingness to communicate scale, and some of these questions were, um, there was like a heading, I use Facebook to or because, and then it was to pass time when I'm bored, because it is entertaining, to send a message to a friend, etc. And then from this section of the survey, we did factor analysis, and we got loadings for four factors, which were relationship maintenance, entertainment diversion, companionship, and coolness. Um, and we got great alphas for each of these, the lowest of which was uh, 0.88. Um, and then these factors explained over 71% of the variants, uh, which we're also really happy with. Ashma is actually going to talk more about these factors in a minute. Um, but the next section of our survey asks 15 items from Leary's Social Anxiousness Interaction Scale, which is a mouthful every time we say it. <laughs> um, these were also on a five-point Likert scale. And then they asked questions such as, I feel comfortable in a group of people I know, or I feel anxious um, in casual situations, and these basically just measure the level of social anxiousness the individual is feeling. Um, and from these, we created a summative index, of which we got an alpha of 0.88, which we were also very happy with. So now Ashma is going to talk about our results. Hi guys. Um, of the 263 respondents, um, we got the majority actually that had an account were 93%. Um, the most of our respondents were also females, about 64%. 
We found that on an average, respondents log on to Facebook more than four times a day, spending nearly an hour on the website, and on an average have 540 friends. Um, the average age of the respondents was 24, and Caucasians responded the most out of any other race, about 66%. The majority of respondents were graduate students, followed by freshmen, seniors, juniors, and then sophomores. Um, our first research question, what motivates people to use Facebook? And what we found from the factors that Elizabeth told you guys is that most people use Facebook either for entertainment or maintaining relationships. And we found that freshmen and juniors use Facebook a lot more than graduate students to maintain relationships. And we also found a correlation that the younger your age is, the more you will use Facebook to maintain relationships. Um, as far as entertainment goes, we found that freshmen use Facebook a lot more than graduates, again, for this reason, and that females use it, use Facebook a lot more for entertainment uh, more than males. Our second research question was, how does social anxiousness relate to motives of Facebook use? And we found a correlation between social anxiousness and companionship, meaning that the higher the level of social anxiousness, the more likely the individual will actually use Facebook to find companionship. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Robin, and who's going to discuss this further. Okay, basically we found that um, social anxiousness only plays a minor role in internet use as a means of interpersonal communication, which says that people who feel discomfort in social situations use it slightly more than people who don't. Um, like Ashma said, entertainment diversion and relationship maintenance were the most popular reasons why people used Facebook. Um, we found this interesting because we thought that there was going to be a, the strongest correlation between um, social anxiousness and minutes and time spent on Facebook, but we didn't find anything to support that. Um, in terms of social anxiousness, though, we did find a weak positive correlation between social anxiousness and companionship, which basically said that social anxious individuals use Facebook to seek out companionship more than those who aren't. Um, another interesting finding was uh, that women used Facebook more than men for entertainment diversion reasons. We kind of expected this because we found um, a uses and gratification study done in the 1940s. It was one of the first studies done, um, and it actually researched um, women and soap operas. And they also found that women used media more for um, entertainment diversion reasons. Um, in terms of Facebook, we thought this might be able to um, apply um, in terms of applications, like uh, women use uh, entertainment applications like Sorority Life and Farmville more than maybe like your male friends do. Um, we found a correlation between uh, the younger a person was and um, the more they used it for uh, relationship maintenance or higher use of Facebook use. And um, we found this because, or we thought that this went along with it because of something we found called friend sickness, which basically says that when someone goes away from college for the first time, they feel distressed and they want to turn to the internet to reach out to old friends. Um, like Ashma said, there wasn't any, um, or I don't know if Ashma said this actually, <laughs> um, there's no significant findings in the coolness factor. Um, coolness. <laughs> we thought maybe Facebook just isn't cool anymore and that everyone has it and not only like a, it's common and not only like a little proportion of people can have that. Um, in terms of limitations, we restricted it to only one Southeastern University, which obviously is not demographically diverse. Um, in the future, we'd like to expand our sample to um, other colleges and also other age groups because the fastest growing age group is um, middle-aged people, 30, well, actually not, 30 to 54. Um, we had a lot of other suggestions for future research, but the main one that interests us was uh, to expand upon our current research, which would be to explore social anxiousness um, in terms of Facebook over other forms of interpersonal communication, like to see if social anxiousness, anxious individuals use Facebook more than email or telephone or face-to-face -face interactions. So that is our presentation. We will open it up for questions.